Okay. So good evening, everyone. So welcome to our first ever IELTS speaking battle. So are you guys all excited or ready? I think this is the first time that we will have uh, that we will have this. So it's a little bit um, nervous that I could feel right now, but I think we can enjoy this, and everyone could show up what they can, um, what they can, you know, their skills in terms of speaking for IELTS. Thank you, you are, because you said that yes, we are ready. Okay, so first things first, I need to introduce our judges. Uh, for our first panel of judges would be Miss Jeanette. Jeanette, please introduce yourself. Hello, Jeanette. Hello, My Jeanette. goodness, sorry for the delay. <laughs> okay, Theo, welcome. Jeanette, please, and please introduce yourself. Hi, guys. It's Good evening. This is Jeanette. How are you doing? Um, I'm here in Abu Dhabi. So my Mr. Jeffrey is my co-worker before. So I hope you guys all have fun tonight. And this is just a challenge to um, focus and motivate ourselves. So hope you guys enjoy. Okay. Lovely. So for our second judge would be Doreen. <laughs> Doreen. Hi, guys. Well My done. name is Doreen, and I'm currently working here in Dubai. I'm working as a nurse. And uh, guys, let's enjoy this and have fun. And uh, thank you to Sir Jeff and Sir Clint for uh, giving spice on our review. Thank you. Welcome. So, and for our head coach, it would be Sir Clint. Sir Clint, can we hear something from you? Please introduce yourself. Hi guys, so good evening. My name is Clint, and I am the owner and founder of Elite Intellect 9 IELTS Review Center. Okay, so what I can say right now is for you guys to have fun, as well as, of course, for you guys to enjoy everything tonight, because this is all for you guys. Okay, so just have fun. Okay, thank you so much, sir. So, like I said, so just only to give you a brief idea that our judges, um, you, you are able to sit as a judge first if you are an IELTS expert and second native speaker or English language and thirdly for all those who already pass IELTS in ter um, in the, with the subtest of speaking okay so now let's introduce our warriors so for our first pair we have Oscar versus Ancho okay and the second Pair would be Zaya and Sabri. So make some noise, guys. You can chat in our chat box. Okay, so who's your bet? And especially if you are representing your country, because as I know, we have from the Philippines, we have three warriors from the Philippines, and two warriors from India, and one from Sri Lanka. And for our third pair, pair would be Teo and Vikash. So let's start now. So our first round is an elimination round. So it's between the battle between Oscar and Ancho. So first things first, let's go, Oscar. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hello, guys. <clears throat> yes, Oscar, hello, could you please? Uh, I am Oscar Gabbat. Go. I am Oscar Gabbat from Pangasinan and yes, currently working as a public health nurse. Okay, that was cool. And how about you, Anshu? Hello, guys. Very good evening. Hello, you. I'm from India. I'm working as a registered nurse. Okay. Wow, you're also a nurse. So, okay. Anshu, could you please make your voice louder because I cannot hear you clearly? So the judge would really judge okay, you based sure. on your performance. Okay. So Without further ado, let's begin. So for your first question, Oscar. Okay. Oscar, this is for you. Do you think sleep is important? For me, sleep is really essential in our daily living. Primarily because 
it's the best way for us to get rid from the toxicity of our work environment. Being a public health nurse, I am working from Mondays to Fridays, starting 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So I almost take the opportunity for having good sleep every weekends. Okay. So for your second question, is it necessary to take a nap every day? Yes, it's greatly important because I think having enough for sometimes is can be a best way for you to get focused and for you to be more productive in your daily living. For example, if you are working from the whole weekdays, I think having enough is highly necessary because I think having a break sometimes is greatly important for us to get have some good rest and for us to be able more productive in our work environment. Okay, great. So for your last question on your part one, can you sleep well if you are in a noisy environment? Actually, I'm not that type of person who usually have a good sleep whenever I am in a noisy environment, mainly because whenever I sleep, to be honest, I usually want to hear worship song because I think it's the best way for me to have the tranquility for me to be for me to achieve the peace of mind actually whenever I have sleep I want to be in a place who has who has really at peace and also in silence so on that statement on that question rather maybe ha being in a noise environment I don't have totally go to good sleep mainly because of that um and because of that noise. Okay, thank you. So that is um end of your part one. So let's us hear from our judges. So for our first judges, what do you what you can say, Miss Doreen? Hi, thank you, Oscar. Thank you for um, answering those questions. So I could say that you also use some luxes like toxicity, tranquility, the peace of mind. However, I think there's only some glitches in your grammar. Like you said, get have some good rest. And you also repeated a couple of times the word actually. However, I could say as well that your fluency is there. So I commend you on that. And your pronunciation, I don't have any problem with that. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Doreen, what is your score? The lowest would be four and the highest is nine. What is your score for Oscar for part one? Um, I'm going to give Oscar seven for part one. Okay. Thank you so much. So for our next judge, Jeanette. Hello, Jeanette. Hi, Oscar. Oscar, um, that was great for answering part one. You, you have nice words like tranquility and, and, you know, able to nap at times when you are um, exhausted from work on a daily basis. So, very good. Um, just with um, same comment with Miss Doreen, some slips, some grammar errors with the verbs, but um, you can improve that, I know. So, for that, I commend you and Jabber. So, what is your score for Oscar? I can give him eight. Okay. You're so generous. Okay. Thank you. So, for our head coach, Sir Clean. Hello, Oscar. Yeah, good job. A wonderful job on that particular question. Okay, so first things first, I have noted that you are very keen when it comes to your paraphrasing. Yeah, you paraphrased important to essential, which is good, right? So the lexies are there. You're able to you're able to state your experience as a nurse, as well as, of course, your delivery is quite direct, okay? So when you were asked about the enough sleep, uh, you said that you're the type of person who would need enough sleep for you to uh, for you to become focused and it's highly necessary, okay? So there are just some minor utterances that I have noted, okay? And then and for the last question, I like that you were able to use the word rather to reformulate on your answer, okay? So good job, Oscar. Okay, sir, what is your score for Oscar? Well, for Oscar, I'm going to give him a seven. Okay, thank you, lovely. So guys, if you know, 
um, our judges are giving their score based on the criteria of IL. So we're still sticking on the IELTS criteria. Fluency, grammar, vocabularies, or lexis. And last one would be pronunciation. So now we'll move on to his head-to-head -head battle between Anshul. Now, Anshul, you can turn up your you can turn on your mic and as well as your camera. Are you ready, Anshul? Anshul. Yes, can oh, you hear me properly? Okay. Wow, yes, you can hear you. Thank you so much, Anshul. So this is your question. Okay. Why do people go fishing? Yeah, it's a nice question because people usually prefer to fishing because they want to because they are totally stressed up due to their 24 into 7 works uh, life schedule and apart from it uh, they go to fishing for disaster and uh, can sorry okay and so are you done? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's your answer. Okay, next question. Do you like eating fish? Not at all, because I'm a little vegan, and uh, even my religion is also allowed me to take non veg, uh, non -veg uh, fruit foods for, uh, that's why I'm not taking it. But uh, so I usually prefer vegetarian foods. Take uh, the consumption of uh, protein and others. Okay. So here's your final question for part one Where can you fish? And show. Where are you, Anshul? Oh my God, Anshul. <laughs> I think Anshul got disconnected. Anshul okay, Anshul got disconnected. No. So, okay, we will go back for Anshul later. Okay. No. Uh, I, you're, you're here. Sorry, Anshul. Okay, go Anshul. Sorry, I, I get back. Can you hear no me? No problem. Yeah, I can. we can hear you. So okay. this is your question. Where can yeah. you fish? Sorry? Where can you fish or where can you go fishing? Uh, actually, I early said I'm not uh, eating fish, but uh, it's not mean that I'm not doing fish. So I usually prefer to go on the nearest beach in my city, and that's uh, is outskirts of the city. And uh, I usually go to there with my friends to do fishing. Okay, so that's the end of your part one, Anshul. So let's let's hear something from our judges. So Jeanette, please turn on your mic. What can you say about the performance of Anshul? Um, I'm very sorry for that because you know the connection is not so stable, so I was not able to hear some words clearly and then some answers are also cut off but for that um i think Anshul should um work more with the some vocabs but um great job on trying to answer the questions clearly um but i think he can improve more from time so, so thank you good job Anshul. what is your score you can give for Anshul? I, th I think for now, I can give him a six. Okay, thank you, Jeanette. So, yes. And next would be Doreen. Hi, Anshu. I agree with Jeanette. I think there's a problem with your connection, so I didn't uh, hear you properly. However, I could also say that there are a few hesitations uh, in answering questions, and then, oh, but... The, the fluency will be there, but I think you still need to do more practice. And as well as uh, 
um, the uh, Lexus, though you use one, the outskirt, but I think you need also to add more on your Lexus so it will be able to uh, help you more in um, giving an expanded uh, answer. So for that answer, but I also appreciate that your grammar is there and then you just need to be, have more practice, it will help you. So for now, I can also give you a six. Thank you, Doreen. And for our head coach, Clint. Hello, Angel. Yeah, so that was really good. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I have noted is there are just some utterances. Yeah, when we say utterances, is that you're quite hesitating on the first parts of the question. So you guys all have to remember that on the IELTS speaking examination, it should be a quick backfire of thoughts, right? So that when your examiner asks you a question, you have to answer directly in a sense that you have to show them that you're not thinking at all, okay? So it's like an effortless way of answering, okay? I like that you were able to detail on the questions even though it is against your belief. That is one thing that can make or break an, a test taker's, um, what do you call this, score. Because sometimes if people, like what Anshul did, guys, is that he is actually vegan. I'm not, I'm not. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we can hear you, but could you please make um, vo your voice louder, sir? Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me shift. Let me switch to my ear. Okay, is this better? Yes, perfect. And now we can see you as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what I what I said was for actual. It was actually quite um, commendable how he was able to talk about. Um, the belief, even though he's, it is against his own personal beliefs, like if he's eating fish, right? So that is one thing, guys, that you have to focus on in the IELTS examination is that it's not a personal question. So you have to handle it like what Anshul did, is that he was able to tape on his answer as well as, of course, he tried to answer that even though he's actually vegan, okay? So good job on that. So for me, I think I'm going to give Anshul a seven for that one because he is actually on to the point as regards the answer even though it's not just preferred okay okay thank you so much sir so see guys so it's very important for us especially if you are the one who will do the battle make sure that you have a good connection so our judges could judge you very clearly okay and for our next can uh, ne next pair would be please make sure you can turn on as well your camera so it's good that we can see your facial expression or gesture, okay? So for the next pair, come on in, Zaya and Sabri. Hello, Zaya. Where Hi. are you, Sabri? Hello, Hi, Jeff. Zaya. Hello. Okay. So I'm uh, sure. Jeff, uh, quick, quick uh, question. When oh, I'm sure. speaking, can I go, go on? Uh, stop video because I'm here. It's thundering and raining okay. in Sri Lanka. Okay. Uh, I might have the same issue as Anshur. Okay, sure. Uh, but of course, on and off, I can uh, switch on the uh, video. It's not the good weather we are having in here. Okay. So yeah. Well, at least we can. We saw you now. Okay. Thank you, Sabri. So yes, Sabri. Right. Since you are already talking, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, all right, great. Uh, so great evening to you all. I'm Shabri from Sri Lanka. Uh, by profession, I'm an HR uh, employee working for an, a software development company. Okay, so good. How about you, Saya? Hello, everyone. My name is Demi Sawyer. So I came from the Pearl of the Orient, which is the Philippines. So I am a nurse by profession, but currently I'm not working as I'm concentrating on my IELTS. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so without further ado, let's see the battle for the two, for the second pair. So this is your question. Let's start with Seiya. Seiya, do you read news in newspapers or on the internet. In this new era, 
of the internet, I prefer reading through different kinds of websites like Grappler, BBC, or even CNN because currently I'm living in a suburb that is somehow similar to a countryside. So that takes me around an hour in order for me to get through the nearest stand for me to get a <laughs> newspaper. However, I do think that there are some disadvantages of reading through the internet, such as, for example, there are a lot of fake news that is being propagated by trolls or some people who just want clout. So that is my answer to that. Okay, good. So for your second question. Okay, do you think it's important to read newspapers? Absolutely. I do believe that it is paramount for us to read the news, for us to be updated on the latest events that's happening locally, but also throughout the world. Because this way, we're able to inform ourselves, and also we will be aware of the recent rules that is being given not only by the World Health World Health Organization, sorry, because currently we're in the era of the COVID-19 pandemic. So a lot of instances that CDC as well as the World Health Organization is giving us a lot of feedbacks on which we need to do. So I do believe that it is essential for us to inform ourselves with regards to these rules. Okay, perfect. So for your final question, say, uh, what, influence, uh, what influence do you think newspapers had on society? Well, looking back on the different instances where in, say, civil wars, martial laws, and the like has been happening to a lot of nations worldwide, I do believe that newspapers or news programs for that matter have a big or to help people call to arms as well as to help people know what's happening. It reveals and unveils the truth of society. It gives light to the things and to the issues that have been neglected worldwide. For example, there is what we call as media censorship in Hong Kong right now. So a lot of people are not informed of what's happening in their environment, in their government for that matter. And now I believe that is the primary role of media and the newspaper for them to let the people know what is happening in their government, in their country, for them to somehow criticize or for them to know what they have to do as citizens themselves. Okay, thank you so much. So. Well done, Seiya. So let's hear the comments of our judges. So first, Jeanette, please unmute your mic and give your verdict for Zaya. Wow, Zaya, as expected from your previous um, practices, good use of um, vocabs, very wide. Um, and you were able to impart your answers and think globally and as well as um, provide good examples. I like the media censorship and martial laws and examples with the Singapore. So good job on that. Thank you. Okay. Your score, please. I would give her an eight. Okay. Thank you. So next would be our very own Doreen. Hi, Zaya. Without a doubt, you can nail your examinations. I'm so proud of you. You are commendable. And I could say that you have a great future in the IELTS industry, being an examiner someday. Okay. Your Thank score, you. please. Um, I would love to give you... There's no point five, correct? Yep. Okay, so for that, Zaya, I'm going to give you eight as well. Okay, perfect. And for the final score of Zaya, let's hear from our coach, head coach, Clint. Okay, Zaya, so it is very much expected. Are you sure? Are you sure? Sure, Zaya is not my child. I think, I think, I think, 
Well, anyway, she's really good when it comes to her control of her um, Lexi's as well as, of course, her control of her delivery. Very commendable accent, the way that she's delivering, the way that she's neutralizing everything, as well as, of course, the way that she can actually input some views as regards the questions for the part one. Okay, so um, just a little bit of note for Zaya. Sometimes um, the questions, um, the answers tend to be too long. Okay, so sometimes you have to somewhat eliminate some of the information that you have already stated. However, what you said are the things that can make it more detailed. And I like that you have very good vocal control as well as, of course, your enunciation is there. And, of course, your control of the Lexis is very much commendable. Okay? So, I'm going to give Zaya an A for this. Okay. So, you got triple A. Perfect. So now wow. let's move. Yes, absolutely. So let's now move to Sabri. Hello, Sabri. Are you ready? Okay. Hi, Jeff. Yeah. Yes. Are you excited? Okay. So yes, this is your question. Your first question. What is the best age to learn driving? Uh, so great question. So uh, at very first, uh, Jeff, I would say uh, learning is like at, it, it, it could take place at any age. But trust me, uh, I had my learning of bikes was when I was very young. Uh, I, I started uh, driving two wheel when I was almost like in 12, 13. But when you had to when I had to jump into a four wheel, it was I was on all, all almost in my late uh, teens where I was like driving my first car. Uh, when I was about 20. So, uh, but one thing is in Sri Lanka, there are people who tend to drive uh, despite whether they have license or not. But if you ask me, uh, the best option would be at the age wise, you t if you can learn at the younger age, you have a great little insight on your body. And when you uh, drive, it's not about just driving, you have to make sure you follow the uh, rules and protocol of the country. Uh, that's where I'm, I'm very much concerned about because getting a driving license doesn't make you a perfect driver. You should follow the protocol. Uh, so at a young age, if you follow it well, I'm sure you will have a good time. Okay, thank you. Impressive. Okay, for your second question, how do you feel about getting older? Yes, uh, again, getting older, it's something not in, in our hands. It's uh, something in from comes from nature. nature. So uh, yes, sadly, I'm in my early 30s. So I, it, it life goes on. Uh, I wish I, I stay young forever, but that's not happens. Like we tend to, when I was young, we always thought of, I, you want to become an adult, but when you're in early 30s, you feel like you want to go back to your school and enjoy the same moments with your friends. Uh, but life has to go on. In few years, uh, I'll be in uh, 50s where my kids uh, will have the uh, time. So th th that is something uh, comes from natural and let it go. But I would say one thing is you should enjoy the moment. You should uh, enjoy the time you uh, live in. Uh, that's what I personally believe in. Okay, thank you, Sabri. So this is your final question on part one. Should we treat people in different ages in the same way? Uh, I would say uh, I'm, I'm, I'm open always for the not, uh, equity because it's not about treating the same person at the same age because you should give a, a sweet to when you are younger, but you should give something spicy when you are at your late ages. So it's not something you should give everyone the same thing. Uh, if, you, if you are giving me a compliment, I would love to have something which is useful for my life. But if you want to offer something for my daughter, you have to give her something which she loves to, maybe a toy, maybe a sweet. So it, it's not about what you offer, it's, a, it's about what you give for the right person, mat what matters. Okay, thank you so much. So now let's hear from our judges. So let's start first with Doreen. Okay. Hi, Savri. How are you? Hi, Johnny. I'm, I'm doing good. Great. So I appreciate the way you answer the question. So uh, your uh, 
you keep on uh, continuing expanding your answer. That's actually great. However, in the, in um, question one and two, I think uh, before we expand the question, we should directly answer the question that has been asked by our examiner. Correct. So, for example, what age um, uh, can you? What age uh, uh, a person can drive? So we should first directly answer that. Then we can expand our questions. Okay. And then, as well as um, in your pronunciation, I can listen to your words. And then also, but then I would also suggest if you can uh, use some big words, it will help you for your Lexis because um, I didn't heard. Uh, Lexis, big words that you have used. So, and then also the um, um, the grammar, it's, it's, it's fine. There's a little like glitches, but then I can say that uh, you, you are also almost there. And one thing for sure that I have learned with my great coach, uh, his name is uh, um, Sir Joseph, Sir Clint Joseph. So he's an amazing coach of mine. He told me about don't use the, yeah, that's that's my amazing coach. So, uh, don't use a second person view. So it's not actually uh, yeah you. You said to the examiner, if you ask me, then it's actually not a good thing because we should always use a third person view. Okay. Yeah, but then because of your the way you answer the questions and then expanding it, I appreciate that. So I can give you seven for that. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Thank you so much. Jeanette? Hello, Jeanette. What can you say about Sabri? Jeanette, you're on mute. Yep. Sorry, I'm muted. Hi, Sabri. How are you? Hope you're doing fine. So just my comment. Great, great. And part on question uh, number one, um, just like same comment of Doreen, you were not able to answer the question directly. So bear in mind that sometimes during the exam, exam day, the, the examiner will just cut you off. So right just in the middle of your sentence, he or she will just cut you off. And if you do um, put the, your alibis and some connectors at first, you know, lo very long, and you're not able to answer the question directly, so he or she may not able to answer your, uh, to hear your questions and um, grade your grammar and English skills by that. Um, but overall, you have a nice tone, very conversational, like, just like speaking with a friend, so which is nice. And on second question, um, we keep on repeating some lines twice. So just keep that in mind and um, prevent that next time. But overall, very good. Good effort. Very impressive. Um, okay. I'd, like to, I'd love to give you a seven. Okay. Good. Thanks, Jeanette. We may, may we'll call on Sir Clint. Clint, are you still in the house? Hi, Sabri. <laughs> yes. Hi, hi. Okay, so I like that when you're detailing, it's like you're telling a story to the, to the examiner. I like that you were able to express all the things that you would like to say, right? As well as, of course, it's an effortless way of delivering. Uh, there's, there are just some minor glitches or utterances that I have noted as well as, of course, uh, you could have used some of the lexis or the academic words, which are quite important in the IELTS examination, okay? And also, um, yeah, as what Doreen has mentioned earlier, uh, you guys, especially when taking the IELTS examination, please avoid to speak on the second person view as much as possible. Do not say you, your examiner. You should always be uh, addressing the general masses. Okay, so you should them, they, and some. However, I enjoyed the way that you are delivering because it's like you're enjoying it. Okay, so that's that's the that's the that's the thing that you have to do when it comes to the examination, guys. Is for you to Enjoy the examination for you to remove the unnecessary passion, okay? So, Sabri, I think I'm going to be giving you a seven for this one. Wow, okay. You got All triple right. seven, Sabri. Good job. So first, I want to say apologize to, uh, I would like to give apology to all the viewers that cannot come in because they're just only limited for 100, uh, 100 participants. Yep. So next time we will do something about this. So let's move on to the last pair. So come on in, Teo and Bikash. So Jeff? Yes, perfect. Where is Bikash? Okay, perfect. Sorry. So, no problem. Sorry for my signal. Okay, I will go first to 
Teo. Teo, please introduce yourself. Um, hello, guys. Good evening. And my full name is Leo Ray Ondong Esta. I'm a 28-year-old top stunner, all the way last, from Cavanatuan City, Philippines. And currently, I'm working as one of the staff nurses of Manuel V. Gallego General Hospital here in the Philippines. And I'm working 12 hours per shift for uh, the last seven years. Okay. Lovely, Teo, for saying stunner. I can see that you're really yes. a stunner. <laughs> okay. So next, um, Bikash, please introduce yourself. Hello, Bikash. Yes. Okay. Hello, Jay. Yeah. Please introduce yourself. Hello, Bikash. Okay. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. We, I can hear you right now. Hello. Could you please try to speak? Yeah, just okay. introduce yourself. Okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Vikas Singh. I come from India. And if I'm talking about my city, I come from the smallest city of India, that is Jaunpur City. And it is less populated city. And my city also known for the... Uh, their ancient ancient places and ancient things so uh, currently i'm pursuing my bachelor's in civil engineering from lucknow and after that uh, i have a plan to go canada for my masters and where i'll well i'll be doing my construction project and management okay thank you Rikar. so let's we'll start now with leo please mute yourself Rikash. i will mute you first leo Okay, so this is your first question, Leo. Have you ever borrowed books from others? Of course, one good example of that is from Miss John. She's my teacher back in college, and the book that I borrowed from her is Our Anatomy, the Anatomy book, because back then I was really discombobulated and I felt that I am an income book as regards this subject. And because of borrowing that certain book, it put me in a stage of sublime and astonishment. Okay, thank you. So, how do you feel when people don't return things they borrowed from you? Well, I felt forlorn and perturbed about it because I am, really opt they are really up to no good by doing that and it's disturbing in a way that that ostentatious product or material is not their own oh it's not their possession so it's kind of dismal and tenebrific for me okay thank you so for your last question do you like to lend things to others? Well, lending things here in the Philippines and or across the, bur the board is, is an ordeal which is capricious and ubiquitous, but it's also challenging to nullify. And in this quagmire, I think um, mm, we should just be rapturous about it. Okay, thank you. So let's hear first for our thank you so much, Leo. That's your part one. So thank you, sir. Okay, so let's hear from our judges. Doreen. Hi to you. Hello. Hi, hi ma'am Doreen. Hello. Hi to you. I'm enthralled with your Lexis. That's awesome. Wow. I can comprehend you use uh, in just like in question one, I believe you already use almost five. Or if I'm not mistaken, you use all Lexis <laughs> in answering the questions, which really amazing. And I, I couldn't say anything more to you. Um, I think you also have a good future in the IELTS industry. Thank okay. you, ma'am. What's your score, um, Doreen? I, I will give him eight. Okay, thank you. 
And then let's go for Jeanette. Jeanette, your comment for to you. Hello, Jeanette. Jeanette, you're on mute. Sorry, Jeanette. Please Sorry, I'm muted. Again, hi, Theo. Oh my God, I cannot say anything hi, more. Um, I don't even know some of the words you use and good use of Lexis, big words, like maybe tons of almost 20, like every other words, it's, just, it's all big words. And it's all new to hear for me. And with that, good job, very nice effort. Just a little bit hesitations, but you know, it's very um, minimal and not so obvious. And that's all. Good luck. What's your score, and please? I'm going to give you eight as well. Okay, thank you. So, eight and eight. So, for our final verdict for Theo, Sir Clint. Okay, so good job, Theo. Yeah, because he was able to use these. Um, like or big words on the examination. Okay, so the thing that you have to remember, guys, for you to get a score in the IELTS examination, at least an eight and above, is for you to utilize um, these types of words. It's because um, the way that he controlled the use of the lexis is actually quite commendable in a sense that is enthralling for uh, other people. However, guys, you have to remember that your examiners are all Cambridge educated. Okay, so they will be able to understand these words. Heyo has been out uh, that that was said. Okay, so uh, nevertheless, if for example you are on your examination, then you can actually do this technique that he was doing, with which he is inundating the examiner with like. Okay, so that's very good to you. Okay, so I'm going to give you an A for that. Thank you, sir. Jeff, you're on mute. You're muted. You're, mute. you're muted. You're muted. You're muted, sir. Sorry. Okay. Unfortunately, I want to announce something. Our judge, Doreen. Doreen, please tell them anything she needs to leave because she has an appointment. Yeah, guys, thank you so much okay. for your time. I need to go ahead, okay. enjoy, oh. and okay. have fun. Thank you so much, Doreen. So Hi, with Doreen, that, take care. Love you. Thank you, Doreen. So with that, I will replace Doreen with Charles L because Charles also is a recent passer of IELTS test. Charles, you will replace Doreen as a judge. Okay, Charles L. Okay, okay. Sir Jeffrey. Thank you. So, Charles, you. please tell us about yourself. Just only quick. Hi, my name is Charles. I'm currently working as a staff nurse here in Al Ain, United Arab Emirates. Hope we will have fun in this IELTS speaking battle. Okay, so now for the final, thank you, Charles. So for the final candidate, Bikash, please unmute your mic. Ah. Yes. Okay. Hello, okay. Okay. So this is your first question. Do you like shopping? Yes, I like shopping and where I'm living currently in Johnpur and uh, there are plenty of markets and most of the time I love to go supermarket because whenever I go there, I, I find everything like, like from groceries to my clothing, all these things, I, I can buy there very easily and shopping is my hobby. I can say myself as a shopaholic and when, whenever I go to the market, I, I, I love to take I like to take my parents with myself because he is a, a pair of my whatever I buy from that market. Okay, thank you. So for your second question, do you compare prices when you shop? Yes, uh, I come from the middle class family. So uh, we, I do not want to pay much harder on my uh, stuffs what Ever I'm buying, so uh, I usually compare prices with my things, and uh, while while uh, buying something much important, so I do not uh, usually buy uh, usually compare things with my prices. Okay, so thank you. So this is for your final question. How often do you buy something in a shop? 
um, oh, I'm a, uh, a student, so uh, I don't have much time to go for shopping. Uh, so I love to go market whenever there's a weekend. So in India, there's a two uh, two day holiday, uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday. So um, I, I love to go in weekend, and this is a kind of uh, enjoyment. Uh, whenever I go market, I don't want to buy something just just to reach and just uh, look at the things whatever available in the market whenever i find something important i i love to buy that okay so that's the end of your part one question head to head round um so let's hear from our judges Charles. what can you say about the performance of bikash hi for miss mr bikash so spontaneity is there hello, hello, hello yes sir. Spontaneity is there, coherence is there. However, you need to work on more on your Lexis, I believe so. And there are some uh, glitches in your grammatica, grammar, grammar, I mean. So for uh, this performance, I would like to give you a six. Okay. Thank you. So yes. And next would be Jeanette. Jeanette, okay. Hi, Vikash. How are you? Okay, good performance. Hello, Hello ma'am. I'm good. Okay, good performance. Okay, just with your speaking. I'm not sure if that's your speaking face. Um, just with pauses. You're very fluent and spontaneous, but, you know, I feel like I can hear some, I can hear periods in every each of the word. So, that's very obvious for me. Just try to work on that. But overall, it was good. Thank you. I would love to give you a seven. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, Sir Clint. Hi, Vikash. Yes, that was really Hello, good. Sir. Okay, so the way that you are delivering, I like it that you have that um, spontaneity with the way that you are delivering. But sometimes, guys, you have to remember spontaneity can either be good or can either be deleterious on your examination. What I mean by this one is sometimes so when a person is very much spontaneous in speaking, uh, the, the positive thing that can come from this one is your examiner can get that um, positive fluency. But however, the, the deleterious aspect of this one is sometimes when a person is too spontaneous with the way that they're delivering, some of the words do not usually um, go across as what you meant to be, okay? So what I like is that um, you were able to talk about your experience all the time. All of the questions, you're basing on your experience. And I think that is the major thing that people should do on the examination is that for them to always base it to what they have encountered in my life, okay? So there are just some minor utterances and I want you to work on your vocabulary, okay? So I'm going to be giving you a seven for this. Okay, so okay seven. So guys, please chat in who do you think are the top three that will advance for the second round. So yes, I will share now the, the tally score. So this is the top three that we, can, we have who will advance just only to share for the fairness of everyone okay so overall we have total 22 for oscar 19 for anshul zaya 24 sabri 21 teo 24 and vikash 20. so with that we have oscar 22 and zaya and teo that they had tied for 24 overall so Come on in, Teo and Oscar and Zaya. Good job. Thank you so much for Anshul, Vikash, and Sabri. So for round two, you, they need to describe a topic. And the only minutes that they could prepare is only 10 seconds. So that is really challenging. So are we ready now? Okay, Oscar. No, okay, go Oscar. Okay, I will stop sharing. So... Oscar, please unmute your mic. And as, Sorry, well as, and as well as the judges. So, okay, this is your question. So, Oscar, this is your topic. Describe a short term you'd like to do in a foreign country. Describe a short term job you'd like to do in a foreign country. So, okay, you have just only 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. So, are you ready? So, you have two minutes yes. to answer this. Okay. And your two minutes, wait, I will just set your two minutes. 
Time. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So your two minutes starts now. Having a great job from other nations would give you more a lot of benefits. For example, when it comes to money matters because i believe when you work to other nations as a medical provider then probably you will be able to see the greener pasture given that question i would probably to become a nurse mainly because it has been my passion to help people to render my health services to them so when i will be given a chance to work in the other country then i would be a nurse there mainly because being a nurse is a noble job and i would greatly um, I would greatly uh, agree that being a nurse could help you a lot of things. For example, being a public health nurse in the Philippines, I was able to see the situations in the marginalized areas, in the far-flung areas. And with that reason, I was totally appreciate what nursing is all about. And aside from that, I was able to see the situations of those children who are less fortunate, who are destitute. So I would like okay, okay. To okay. just to render my helping hand to other people. So I think I want to become a nurse in the other country someday because, yes, as what I have said, helping others has been my passion. And I always want to do that thing with my entire life. As what my mom told me, I want to give my blessings, to give my services to them and in order for them to be able to live their life longer. For me, to be honest, life is greatly important. So you need to live your life at its fullest. So I think being a nurse, I think God gave me this helping hand, used me as his good instrument for me to be able to make someone live longer. So I think being a nurse would be a, more, uh, would be a great profession in order to be these people enjoy their life worth living. So okay, I think okay stop country would stop. Okay, that's the end of your two minutes. So let's let's hear from our judges. Jeanette, please unmute your mic. So I just would like to remind the question was describe a short term job that you yes. want to write. Okay, so Jeanette, please give us give your comment and verdict. Um, hi again, um, Scar. Um, I don't think you get the question right at first. Um, it says short-term job, but I think in general, you talk about being a nurse in a foreign country for long-term um, to be able to um, get the greener pasture and good benefits and experiences. Um, but overall, um, you have a good speed and nice face. Um, you were able to impart some ex life experiences and set a good examples with that. Um, just be careful next time on hearing the um, question correctly. But in the exam day, it's all written in the paper, so you have that. Um, but good, good effort, good job. I'm going to give you a seven. Okay, thank you so much, Jeanette. Okay. So, Charles, what can you say about the performance of Oscar? Hi, Mr. Oscar. So, for your part two, so job well done as well. I agree with Ms. Jeanette regarding for your answer that you didn't uh, met the specific task that was asked, which is really very important in the IELTS exam. So, you've been asked to describe a short-term job and you inform that it will be for a greener pasture. So I, I would like to impart as well to, the, to everyone here that if the task is not met for part two, it will really have a big impact with your score. So um, I'd like to also emphasize that um, if you are asked for a certain or a specific topic like a short-term job, you must emphasize it all throughout your performance. So with that regards, I will give you a 6.0. Thank you so much, Charles. And final verdict, Sir Clint. Hi guys. Sorry, I was just I was just rubbishing through the comment section. I just need to remind everybody that on this particular time, guys, we're having fun as well as of course we are learning. Please don't be too harsh with the candidates or the contestants because I have seen some negative remarks on this one. Again, what you bring out to the world will come back to you three folds history. 
or if you think you can do better than these guys, right, then of course we would love to see what you can do. Please volunteer, okay? Please volunteer. I would really personally would love to assess you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, anyways, um, for Oscar, I love that you have exerted your effort on the second part. However, albeit, the thing is you're able to pick the um, question correctly, sorry, the content of the question. Um, as what Charles said, uh, something that can actually affect your fluency and content, guys, is that um, if you do not get the answer correctly, you'll automatically get a, a score of 5.0 with your fluency and content. Okay, so fluency and content is comparable to the cohesion and coherence in the writing and examination. Okay, so unfortunately, Oscar. Sir, I'm so sorry. I would really, I would really love to give you a seven. However, I, I would, I would want to hear uh, the notes as regards um, the entire, what do you call this, the entire topic itself. So yeah. So for me, I think it's a six. Okay. So I do apologize. Six. So just let me clarify. It's six, right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. The score by Clint is six. Okay. So now let's move on to the next finally semi-finalist, Zaya. Say yeah, please unmute your mic. Okay, so just put Hi. in the chat box your comments. Yes, say yeah, are you ready? Okay. I'll ever be, yes. Okay. What's going on? Okay, so this is your topic, say yeah. Describe an describe an area of science that interests you. Okay, so you have ten seconds. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, okay, it will set your two two minutes to prepare. So, are you ready, Zaya? Okay. Yes, so, yes. your two minutes starts now. There are different fields of science, with, wherein we are somehow amazed of, but in my case, it is what I call as Lasmo Ranchology. As a person who is so deep in research, I was somehow piqued, my interest was piqued by this certain field of science. Now, way back when I was in high school, I originally wanted to be a marine biologist, you see. However, our family is full of people who is uh, inclined to be medical professionals. Now, I wanted to be a marine biologist in order for me to study stingrays and sharks, specifically great white sharks because it's my, or they are my favorite animals. Now this certain branch, Elasmo branchology, is reading on or specifically talking about and observing different kinds of animals or cartilaginous fishes like stingrays, manta rays, sharks, lemon sharks, and the lot. Now this specific branch of science has caught my attention as somehow the sharks and the stingrays are one of the most majestic creatures in the ocean. Now, even if they are on the brink of extinction, and even if the media is demonizing, demonizing them as being the creatures who kill people, as we can see in the different movies like Jaws, uh, 45 Minutes Under the Sea, and the like, I like this one because their species are shrouded with enigma and mystery. And I want to delve in this science because the ocean is just divine and sublime. I want to be one of the people who would advocate against the fishing, the illegal, <coughs> excuse me, the illegal fishing of the, these animals. As you can see, different nations like China and Korea are fishing this against the law and they would just Sorry, fish them stop. out of water. Stop Zaya, mm -hmm. I forgot to unmute my mic. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so Jeanette, please unmute your mic. Hi Zaya. Wow, that was a good one. So really I can say that being a marine biologist is one of your um, dream, dream job to do in the future aside from being a nurse. So with that, good use of Lexis, um, very nice vocabs. Um, I like it how you tell it, like you're telling a story to us and you're able to give emphasis on certain words that gives importance and you want to put, you know, 
um, certain meaning and just justify those um, those species and also put your emotions to it you know like you keep me hooked I, I want to I want to hear you more I want to I want I don't talk, I don't want you to stop talking about it so you know if I'm the examiner maybe I would let you talk for five minutes or so but overall good job nice effort and good luck to IELTS exam soon I would love to give you seven for that okay thank you so seven for Jeanette and Charles. Charles, what's your comment for say? Hey, sorry, again. Okay. Go, Charles. Hello. Yes, Charles, we can yes, hear Isaiah. you. Yes, Isaiah. So that's a very spectacular performance. So I see the spontaneity and then the flow. Hello. Yes. Yes, you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Do you see the flow of thoughts? And she is really very spontaneous. It was like I would do to after speaking, however, she has given only a two-minute time, and I was very impressed with the range of vocabulary that she used. For that matter, I would really love to give her a score of eight and zero. How much against Charles? Could you please repeat? Eight point zero eight. That will be eight point zero, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Charles. Oh, I'm coming. Yes, Jeanette. We need to end at three. Yes, Jeanette. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not me. Okay. So, Sir Clint. Okay. So, um, what what I love about Zaya is that she gets you hooked on her particular delivery, right? Every time that she delivers something, it was towards to it was towards to be what do you call this? It, it was towards to great this work. She can actually pull you towards your story, and the thing is that it's an effortless way of delivering, and that is a signifier of a person who can get an eight or a nine in the examination. You have to be, what do you call this, alluring enough for your examiner to listen to you, as well as, of course, for your examiner to be able to grade you well, the intonation is there. So, um, they have an amazing future ahead of you. I hope you would consider entering the IELTS world, like, real soon. Yeah, because the IELTS world can really be is someone as great as you are. So I'm going to give Isaiah an eight for this. Eight. Okay. So just only a recap for this score. So Clint gave eight, Charles eight, Jeanette seven. So let's move on to our final semifinalist, Theo. Theo, please unmute your mic. Thank you, Zaya. Hi, sir. Hello. Okay. Are you ready, Theo? Game, sir. Okay. So this is your topic that you need to describe. Describe a prize that you want to win. So you just only have 10 seconds, and I will count you there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and 10. So OK, are you ready, Theo? So your two minutes it starts now. Well, God has endowed us with such dauntlessness in order for us to aggregate temerity as regards um, prizes. With that being said, I am effusively attracted to become the Miss Universe. This title is about a pilgrimage in dwelling mainly on how people should somehow transubstantiate themselves in order for them to achieve their laurels and their self-approbation. And the history of this prize is that it eventuated in the stone wall of New York in the smaller community adjacent to the environs of the burg of the city. And it's apparent to say that it's prudent that the totality of the said prize or the said laurel is that it's confiding and regal with its section of discourse. With though, I can say that it is praiseworthy since I am an habitual of enigma, ebullient, and eloquent things. And although there are a lot of misconceptions and issues encompassing this because 
as you can see, I am a gay, and there are grievous and purported appraisals with the aforementioned, as well as trenchant perceptives has unearthed a lot of faux pas and uh, vituperations. Still, notwithstanding this, the, the, whole, the, the whole totality or the holistic self of this possesses this fortitude, this prowess that can compel people a run for their money and can put anyone on the edge of their seats. Needless to say, everyone should somehow roll their dice to experience and prognosticate what the realm that this prize or this achievement can make them under. Because though I am okay, a gay, stop, stop. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, okay, for our comments from our judge, Char, please unmute your mic. Thank you, Theo. Thank you, sir. I'm so speechless, Mr. Theo. <laughs> so I was <laughs> really very impressed with the way that you talked. It was really an overwhelming performance. For each word, I enjoyed hearing each lexis that you have told in your performance. Um, if I will be given an opportunity to give you 9.0, I will give you, however, um, we all know that everyone deserves a point in which we need to have some, our, some of our mistakes. So uh, I would la really love to give you nine, but I will give you 8.0 for the meantime. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. So thank you so much, Charles. Jeanette, please unmute your mic. Wow, Theo, literally nosebleed, nosebleed, hands down. Like every word, it's all big words. I don't know if, if you speak like that normally, but I would love to hear you more. Um, with that, very nice uh, answer. Really Miss Universe le level of answering. Like, I want to see you in stage and answer that in front of millions of people. And with that, no doubt, I'll give you a seven. Ah, sorry, sorry, nine, 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 sir. You will give Teo a snap for nine. nine. Okay, yes. thank you. So, okay. Perfect score, Teo. You got perfect score. Okay. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. <laughs> um, sir Clint? Hi, Teo. Okay, so imagine hearing him speak like that every single day. You will need a dictionary. <laughs> I swear. Like, even though he's just, um, what do you call it, just conferring to you about something, you will need a dictionary. Well, that is a, that is a good way, guys, for you to attack the examination with that, for you to use these levels of um, academic words. Oh, by the way, guys, before I give my comment to Theo first, I saw a comment in the group chat earlier, and it's specifically asking, do I need um, big words when it comes to the part one of the examination? Well, anyways, guys, uh, in any part of the examination, whether that's part one, two, or three, you need to utilize your, um, what do you call this, lexical resources because LR is a part of your grading criteria. And as I always say, all of your scores are proportional or proportionate to each other in a sense that um, they would pull each other up or down uh, nevertheless. Well, anyway, I like that Theo was able to use the word faux pas, right? I love faux pas, and of course, for that, I'm going to give you an eight, Theo, because you need something to prove, um, because sometimes you're passing when it comes to the delivery, okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, what's your score? Sorry, sorry, I for, because I'm chatting. Uh, it's an eight. Eight, okay, so recap for Theo, eight, eight, nine. Okay, so I will total this, and I will show you the score. So. While I'm doing the calculation, sir, maybe you can read the comments um, in the chat box. Oh, okay, sure, 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 sure. Okay, let's read the comments. Okay, so 98% big words did that said, yes, of course. Um, guys, we all know speaking and writing is subjective, so please send perspective. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Okay, so, so I get it. So, okay, sir, I already sum up the score so i will flash now in our chat board okay but i will first admit those people okay so this is the score of our final two 
So the two finalists, the big two, will be Zaya, who got 23, and Theo. So they are in the final round. Okay, are you ready, guys? So Zaya and Theo. Theo. Okay, so this round, for the final round, it's not, it's not going to be me who will ask the question. So it's going to be the, the three judges. So the two, the two guest judges, which is Jeanette and Char, they will ask Theo and Zaya a two common questions. And for the rest would be two questions that, you know, difficult or out or mind boggling questions from our head coach, which is Sir Clint. So are we ready guys? So Zaya and Theo, grab your spot. Okay, so let's go first for Zaya. Zaya. Hello, Zaya. Please unmute your mic. So, wait. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Zaya, I think your um, electric fan is gonna, it's making a sound like loud sound. So, yeah. So, we can hear you yeah, clearly. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So, this is a do or die round. So, we will not go back to the previous score. So, this is their final score on this performance. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, Zaya, go. Sir, um, Char, please ask your question. Part three question for oh. Zaya. Okay, Miss Zaya. Your part three question will be, do you think individuals should be responsible for pollution? Definitely, because in society, the basic building block of society is a family, and each of the family or each family is composed of an individual. Now, change, modification, and transmov, transmov. Oh my gosh, I forgot the term. But alteration starts within ourselves. You see, now every time we try to litter any wrapper or biscuit wrapper for that matter, that can cause a lot already in terms of pollution. Now, it all started when every single person has thrown a single straw in the ocean. And what do we have now? In the deepest water of our Pacific Ocean, there are a lot of species, specifically those that are belonging to the family of tuna who are currently having these microplastics within their system. Now, this is because humans believe that whatever they're doing does not make a difference or will not cause a colossal effect towards the environment. Now, I beg to disagree on that. And I do believe that indeed, as individuals, if we try to unlearn the things that was passed down to us, that we ourselves can make a difference, I do think that we can solve eventually the problem of pollution. Okay, thank you. So for your next comment question, Jeanette, please Isaiah. Okay, um, do you think the intelligence of a person is important? Definitely, I do believe that intelligence is paramount to every person there is because it guides us to whatever we want in life. However, what I don't believe in, on the contrary, is academic intelligence or, say, academic excellence because it is never the mark or the, say, the t it can never determine what you can be in the future. Now, intelligence will teach us what to do, what the uh, necessary things that we need to do in life. However, it will never somehow determine who we will be in the future. That's what I think about it. That's what I envision and I envisage about that. Okay, thank you so much. For the final two questions, it will be coming from Sir Clint. So Sir Clint, please throw the question to Zaya. Hi, Zaya. Wow, good job about that one, okay? Hello. I'm going to be asking you two questions which are necessarily eccentric by nature, okay? So again, these are abstract idea questions, so there is no wrong or right way to answer them, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. All right, the very first question, Zaya, is what do you think is the main difference between existing and proper 
properly coexist. I'm sorry, yeah, I, I did not quite. Okay, I will repeat the question. The question is, what do you think is the main difference between existing and properly coexisting? I am not an expert by by any means with regard to that, but I do think that it is somehow related to biology because, for example, if you're existing, you are living in the plane of the environment. So biologically speaking, you're living, you have this different factors that is happening within your cells, within your, say, within the electrons and the nucleus in your body. Now, coexisting, in my understanding, by the word co, it or by the what do you call that? I forgot the term, but but the precedent co, it means that you are somehow in partnership with someone else. So I do think or believe that that means that you can't live without that certain person. But if we're talking about living in a certain house, or for that matter, it means that you're residing at the same place. So that's what I think about that. I'm not quite sure, but that's my idea on that. Okay, very well, Zia. And for your last question, okay, so this is a this is a favorite question of all the students of the intellect. Okay, so I hope you'll be able to answer this because this is the question. This is the traditional question, as I would like to say. Okay, so the question is: the Empire State Building is deemed to be the highest building on Earth, right? So if you're going to stack coins just to fill in the height of the Empire State Building. How many coins do you think you would stop? Do you think it's possible or impossible? That's a very confounding question right there. However, I do believe it depends on the type of coin you are stacking because different currencies around the world has different dimension and different thickness. It depends whether you're stacking it vertically or you're stacking it horizontally for that. So I do... But I would like to address the first uh, statement. So I do think the Empire State is not the highest building. It's the one world building in America. Now, going back, so I do believe if we're trying to stack coins, specifically Philippine currency, so the, the average thickness of which is about a fourth a centimeter. So if the Empire State is around 340 meters high, I would say that would take around a few millions of coin. And yes, it is possible if you are considering physics and the Coriolis effect, the say uh, gravity and also the wind tension. And that's my idea on that. And yes, it is definitely possible if you're consulting experts and science, uh, those who are science enthusiasts. Okay, Zaya. Thank you so much, Zaya. So yes, so we need comments from our judges. So what can you say about that, Jeanette? Oh, wow, Zaya. That was really nice. Um, with your first question, you're able to connect it to your part two, which is biology. So you're able to extract some examples for that. And you know that this topic is very um, good to you and you know it very well. So um, good job with that. So you're able to, you know, pick up this topic that you know that you are expert on and impart it and, you know, um, put it together to deliver your perfect answer with the question so that's nice and you were able to um, oppose with the question but put example as the academic excellence with regards to the question about intelligence and put reality into it and it, how it affects our uh, and apply to our daily lives and with the other questions like um, able to stack coins in the highest with the highest um, Mini, uh, sorry, tallest building in the world. So good, good job. I feel like, you know, I'm hearing an answer from a Miss Universe in a tele television, like from pre previous Miss Universe, how they answer it. Um, and describe the thickness and also um, put on considering factors like gravity and physics. 
so that's very nice as well so i'm very very much impressed with your performance and for that i'm gonna give you an eight okay so you got eight from jeanette okay so there's someone comment there mel from alex Conde, Verge khalifa in dubai i think he's referring about the tallest building or we don't know maybe it's a tallest skyscraper so yep um, hey guys, next... just clarify. okay i'm just clarify i said deemed okay when you say deemed it's deemed okay it's not okay. proven to be the highest yes thank you so much for clarification so everyone guys so that's the answer thank you so charles can we hear something from you charles Yes. It was really expected that you will be having a hello, yeah, Zaya. Okay, go. Go, Char. Okay, so it was hello. really expected that you will have a very spontaneous performance and as well, I'm very amazed the way that you, that you deliver your thoughts, the way that you deliver your examples. It was like I'm hearing a story and I would like to grasp each of the event of the story that you are trying to tell. I was really very impressed the the intonation that you had um, used in order for you to deliver your ideas. So with that regards, collecting all of the elements of this um, IELTS speaking exam, I would really prefer you to give an 8.0. Okay, 8, 8. So yes, sir, Clint. Oh my God, Zia. The level of erudition of this young woman, my God, the way that she, the way that she pulls everything towards her own knowledge is actually quite enthralling in a sense that it looks effortless on her every time. And you know what? I don't know if you agree with me guys on this one, but you never once saw her sweat, even in the most confusing questions that I have tried to ask her. And that is one thing, and that is a good signifier as regards being on top of the speaking examination. So I like that you always can relate the question or, or can find a way to give your knowledge as regards the question. And this is something that is quite mom momentous and commendable on the examination. Okay, so Zia, I believe I'm going to give you an eight for this one as well. Okay, so triple A for our judges. So now the show is almost done. So okay, let's move on to final final tool. Um Teo. Are you ready, Teo? Hi, sir. Okay, good. So <laughs> Jeanette, please ask your question to Teo. Hi Teo. So for my first question, do you think smart people are happy? Ma'am, sorry. Okay, I'll repeat that. Do you think smart people are happy? Well, being smart is kind of omnipresent and ubiquitary. Howbeit, there are gamut and bandwidth of ideas circumferenous with the given account. Because when you say smart, smart is different. There is a little chasm between being smart and being intelligent. However, my humble concern. One good ideal to this is that being smart is a predilection. You can achieve a lot of astonishments, stupendous things because of being smart. And I think they are really happy. They are rapturous. They're rhetoric, actually, because being smart can be used. Their ledger domain can be used to help others really embodied that zeitgeist of the 1960s. When you are smart, when you are a genius, you can um, foment the growth of your cohorts, hence giving the growth to the economy and to the nation itself. Thank you so much, Theo. Next, Charles. What's Hi, your... Theo. So since you deem to be a miss. Uh, the Miss Universe in the future, I would like to ask you this question. Do you agree that money can buy happiness? Well, that really depends on the druthers or the proclivity of people because on the antipodal 
view money as the source of all evil. However, happiness can be found even in the darkest of time. And by amassing a lot of money, you could be able to buy or purchase a lot of ostentatious things that can make you happy and can make everyone happy. For example, your money can be distributed or prorated in uh, charities and other charitable um, organizations like uh, the Red Cross that can help the health sectors of the government and of course the Hello, Tio. Hello, Tio. And this, sir? Go, go, continue. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, and money is the cashier way of means. It means um, it can reach your nay plus ultra through this. Okay. Thank you so much, Tio. So, sir, Clint, throw your two questions. Hi, Tio. Yes. Hi, sir. Be kind to me. <laughs> yeah, I will. Nate plus ultra. Wow. Okay. So, thank you for my first question. Okay. So, again, this is the abstract idea part. And, of course, there's no wrong or right way to answer this one. Okay. okay. Let's talk about law making. Okay. So, my question about this one is, what do you think is much more important? Should it be the judiciary process or should it be the, the, the legislative process in law making? I think that will be the judiciary uh, process or the sector of it, because it is where the, the law is congregated or constantulated. And if you actually postulate with this in terms of its kernel or essence, it's quite applicable with the government itself in circumventing the stratagem as regards the law itself. Okay, very good. <clears throat> okay. So, Theo, for my last question, okay, so again, after I give the question, what do you think is much more important, or can you compare job satisfaction and job contentment? Well, job in general is actually not my firmament of expertise, but nevertheless, what I can constantulate about this one is that there are myriad repertoires that are profound and germane to give particularity and the general concept with this one. And I think it is the job satisfaction that I can put in a, in a higher hierarchy with this one because once you are satisfied with your job, you will be able to become the jack of all trades. Like it means that you will be able to help others, help yourself, help the other sectors of your family and the government itself, hence, making your life, the world, or the universe rather, in sync and full of zealness. Okay, so okay, that's- thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's hear your final comment, comments from Charles. This is the make it or break it part. That's so mind blowing. Oh my God. <laughs> Actually, it's very hard in my part to judge between the two of you, Zeya and um, Teo. You did really a very good job in terms of delivering your arguments with us. So for me, I was really very interested with your performance. If there is only 9.1 in the IL score, I would rather to give you a score that can pass 9.0. So as of this moment, I will still rather to give you 8.0 because I do believe that there are always room for improvement. Thank you, sir. Okay, Jeanette. Hi, Theo. Oh my God, Theo. I'm Jeanette. You know, I can't keep up on writing down all your vocabs. You know, I don't even um, know some of the words. Like what I said in the comment, it's, it's 98% um, vocabulary and big words and uh, you really did a good job in your homework of speaking and learning these big words and able to incorporate it in your daily convos and 
um, able to put this without second thoughts and like taking time to think about it, you know, because for some of us, it's very difficult. We have to like, uh, think of the big words in the synonym of this, the word that we want to use it. But for you, it's so effortless. It's so smooth. Like it just goes out in your mouth without even thinking about it. Those big words. <laughs> and that's Thank very you, And in general, you were able to give examples and think globally and in general application for your answers to our life. And with that, I commend you really still impressed. And I'm going to stick with my score with you. I'm going to give you a nine. Thank you, Jeanette. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is oh. the final score. Thank you. Okay, Sir oh, Glenn. Oh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's someone um oh, someone's man. heart gonna break tonight. I'm so sorry guys. <laughs> it's really hard. All right, hold on. Um uh, we just have a message. Um uh it says here on the group chat for Jeff and others who created this battle. You have a brilliant idea, you guys are so creative and certain. Oh you're welcome. The first th thank you, Sir Jeff, for this opportunity. Okay, guys. All right, so well, Leo. What else can I say? Those flexes are actually discombobulating with the way that you utilize them in a sense that, yeah, even the most experienced English speaker can actually, what do you call this, be confused with the words. But of course, your examiners are graduates of Cambridge University again. So of course, they would be, uh, they would get that point by point. So, Theo, I like the way that it's very natural. In a sense that when you are delivering something, even though the word is actually quite gargantuan, right? It's very much natural and it's effortless for you, okay? So for me, I'm going to give you an eight. Oh Thank you, sir. Goodness. So guys, I, okay. So yeah, so since we have these scores, Teo lead this, um, lead this competition or battle tonight for a total of 25 and then I'm going to show it now so for the fairness of all okay so this is the total score for Zaya she got triple eight and Theo just only um, broke by Jeanette because Jeanette gave a nine for Theo so in that thing Theo wins this competition so Theo think Congratulations, you, because you, you are our first Thank you. winner. And especially to Zaya. Zaya, you really did well. And actually, you are better than us, or especially me. <laughs> okay, congratulations, guys. So if you are interested to become a judge or even a warrior to battle next episode, so just uh, message me, okay? for another episode of IELTS Speaking Battle. Thank you so much to our judges, um, Jeanette, Doreen, and Charles, especially to our head coach, Mr. Clean. Sir, if you want to say something. Oh, um, hi guys. Yeah, so um, I'm actually so proud of these people right here. All of them uh, did really well, okay? Especially for Zia. Zia, personally, I would like to coach you next week if you're available. Um, I want to schedule you for a coaching before your examination with Sir Jalo, okay? I will, I will take full, full responsibility of your speaking examination because this child right here deserves, um, deserves the best when it comes to the speaking examination. And anyways, guys, so if you want to learn the techniques on how to deliver on the IELTS examination as well as, of course, um, on how to use your grammar as well as, of course, your pronunciation, and your Lexis, you can contact us at Elite Intellect Mind, okay? Thank so, you so yeah, much. we hope to see you in our classroom. Okay. But we want to hear first something from Zaya. Zaya, please unmute your mic. Hi. Yes. Hi. So, congratulations, Zaya. If you want to say something, this is your chance. You are Hi. so amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sir Jeff, Sir Clint, uh, Miss Janet, and Sir Charlie, and also uh, Miss Doreen. Thank you so much. I had fun. I learned so much today. So I I think I can somehow uh, bring this to the exam proper because I have been exposed already to a lot of people, to a lot, a lot of Promethean minds right here. So I think uh, it's 
somehow a platform for me to also help people if they want. So, Sir Jeff and Sir Clint, so I recommend them if you need any help with, with regards to your speaking or your writing for the, that matter. So, go on and contact them. So, uh, that's what I yeah. think. So. Okay. Don't worry, say yeah, we will have um, wild cards edition. So, we're going uh, to expect you there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, finally. Okay, sure. Go. Yeah, um, because some of them has already messaging me in private. Okay, so guys, if you want to contact me, the Facebook page is Elite Intellect 90 Kapanak to One City. Okay, so look for your Sir Jello. We are amenable for your one-on-one -on -one tutorials with, uh, with me personally. And of course, I'm excited to see Zia on our one-on-one -on -one time. Okay, I really want to do a lot of things with you. I want to bring back Zia for the all-star round of this battle. Oh, by the way, Sir Jeff, I think uh, with this time lead, I, we should schedule a speaking lecture with the, with the people who attended. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, so we're going Let's, to talk we about will talk that. about that. So finally, before we end this session, we want to hear something from our first winner, Teo. Come on in, Teo. <laughs> sure. Congratulations, Teo. So I would Teo. like to take this opportunity <laughs> to thank my mother, to give gratitude to my mother, my father. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Clint. Thank you, Sir Jeff, for, um, for you know, consolidating this kind of uh, friendly competition. And it's mm -hmm. really astonishing to the point that we can, we are helping other person, other people out there. And for those um, people who do want to have this kind of prowess, just like Zaya. <laughs> Um, you can contact Sir uh, Clint and Sir Jello for that. They can really help you to, to you know, to amass or to uh, to aggregate things like this. Thank you, guys. Okay. Where's my price? Um, actually, we don't have price. That's why it's a friendly competition. But <laughs> may, it might be during the um during the process or you know the journey of our um um you know underground battle of I speaking. I think there's or someone who could. Uh, I'll take care of this price. Okay. So guys, although it, this is our first time, I could say I think it's successful. So next time we'll be better. Especially I would like to apologize to all the people who want to join, but we have limited 100 participants. Okay, but I will upload this video. So again, thank you so much for your attendance and your support. Thank you guys. Stay safe and good night. Bye. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks to all the warriors who show braveness. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.